It's Brian Preston, the money guy. This one's going to get us some hate mail. I'm, yeah. I'm so worried in the world of Dave Ramsey that if to say this one, I'm almost is like we're going to get blowback on yeah. this one. Yep. I'll say it though. And I put a, I put a disclaimer. I'm so scared to say this one. I'm going to put a disclaimer because used cars, but here's the disclaimer that are naked and not protected by a warranty. Yeah. I, uh, well, this I'll, hits us both. You share yours first, and then I, I will go. I had, I, I'll tell you guys the, what my first car, what my second car, my third car ever. My third car was a used Acura RL. Okay. This is when I was working. I had just left public accounting. I was working in asset management at a big financial planning firm. Bought this used RL, and this thing, this Acura was spectacular. I loved this car. Um, it had a warranty the mm -hmm. first 20,000 miles I owned it. It was great driving. The problem is I'm good at maintenance. So it asked for a timing belt. So I did the timing belt and changed all the, the belts and hoses or whatever you're supposed to do with a certain mileage. That's great. The problem is, is that when I had that repair work done, the guys who did the repair work, and I didn't realize this until after months had passed, because right. you'll, you'll see what I mean by this. They didn't put a belt back on the air conditioning fan. So uh, probably I mean, six months. Took something apart, put it back together. In and Georgia, still yeah, pieces it's left like over. me assembling a Kia. <laughs> you know, you end up with a bunch of stuff left over <laughs> afterwards. It's the same thing with this auto repair shop that I was working with at the time. Is that, and the thing is, is Georgia's hot in the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is like you cut the humidity in Georgia. So it probably at the time, I probably got this done in the winter. No big deal. Right. Summer comes, air conditioner's working. But what I don't realize is poor air conditioner is no longer getting the cooling fan to cool the compressor down. So the compressor goes out on the air conditioner. Air conditioners on cars are not cheap. Mm -hmm. And they're about impossible to, to get a good repair done. So that perfectly good used car... Now, I, I, it turned into the biggest headache or pain in the rear end By for no me. Fault for the of next, your, it's not because you, anything neglectful that you did. That summer was the worst summer of probably my, because you'd have to either take it to get worked on or drive around with the windows down sweating. Yep. I mean, there was not enough deodorant in the world to keep me from stinking driving around in a hot Georgia summer with no air conditioning. So I, got, I wanted to get rid of that car. I mean, that car probably single-handedly got me to buy, my next car was a, a new car. Yeah. So you've had a, a similar experience. Yeah, so I've had the same experience. So, you know, we always hear this thing that it makes a lot of sense to buy used cars because whenever you buy a new car, there's so much depreciation that happens on the front end, you don't want to do that. And so a couple, a couple of years ago, uh, my wife, when we, uh, this, this was right after we first got married, we bought her a brand new Honda Accord. And it was an awesome car, and we did the nice one and all that good stuff. And it was fantastic. Well, then, you know, we moved to Tennessee, and we started having some kids, and we decided, okay, we need an SUV. So uh, we went to go uh, buy this SUV, and uh, at the time, the uh, the car that I was driving was the car that I had in college. It was an Acura TL. It's funny. We had almost the same car. That's weird. Uh, so I had an Acura TL <laughs> Aspirational uh, that I was part. driving, and my wife was driving this Honda Accord. So we were going to buy a new SUV, and we had to decide which car we were going to trade in. Well, common sense says that I should probably trade in the 2005 Acura that had like 180,000 miles and keep driving the relatively new Honda Accord that had maybe like 30,000. But you were thinking your commute's only a mile and a half. I was thinking my commute is so short and I knew what the trade-in value of the Accord was and every single year it was just going to depreciate more and more and more. Well, my Acura was at you know, basically residual value. It wasn't going to go down anymore. So the price of that was pretty much locked in. Well, I told myself, well, since my commute is so long and it's an accurate, it's going to last forever. I should trade in the nice 2013, nice Honda Accord with low mileage and keep driving the Acura. And so that's what we did. And what of course happened within no time. You started having maintenance issues. Started having maintenance issues on the old car. And, and that's what, and that's what I had to be careful. Cause I look, I owned a lot of used cars before I bought my first new one, but there is a point with a lot of these used cars, if they're uncovered and out there and get high mileage, 
they can, I mean, when you can start getting scared that you're yep. going to be walking, that's right. You don't want, you just, it, you have to be careful. So I just put that, don't be too cheap. Yep. Now I know we're going to get some blowback on that one and I'm okay with it because I think that there does come a time that you want to graduate. We've done shows mm -hmm. on that. It, it just gives you a little more peace yep. of mind. You need um, to know what kind of automobile purchase. And we've done, again, go, go look in our archives, go to moneyguy.com, search auto, and you can go look at how to buy a car and how to think about that. It depends on the type of car buyer that you are as to whether it makes sense to buy new or to buy used. Yeah, because we're not against used. I'm no. just saying that there are some There's risks associated even with used. Um, the last one, this will be kind of fun, it's just then we'll move on. I just want to pick on my mom a little bit. Is I didn't know until I got married, we always bought our washing detergent at the big wholesale clubs in these big five gallon containers. Right. And you'd open it up and it'd just be a scoop of white powder. And I didn't, you know, you don't, the thing about being a kid, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, you just don't. It's just like, I didn't know about good toilet paper until I got to college. <laughs> I didn't know about real washing detergent until I got married. Right. Because I just assumed when you wore a brand new shirt, you know, within a month, it was just going to look faded. It would be kind of worn out. It's just going to be faded a little bit because that's just what happens when you wash clothes. <laughs> Not knowing that when I married my wife and she started showing me better detergents, how you could keep the colors could last a little longer. <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's just one of those things. So I, I had to learn, you know, from that washing detergent, yeah. you can be too cheap yep. to where you're actually costing yourself on the wear and tear of your clothes. We, I know when my mom would babysit our, our oldest daughter when she was young, we just knew whatever we sent over there was going to come back. back different. It was going to come back different than it, just because of the way it was washed. Well, I think, and, and this is one of the things you say all the time, Brian, and I, th I, it was in, I think it was in Dr. Stanley's original book, and I think Sarah may have even revisited it in the next minute next door. There's, you got to understand when you, when you, when it's okay to spend money, when it's okay to spend on value, and when sometimes maybe you're just cheaping out, not for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that you can spend a lot of effort. Like I said, it's the whole thing of cut your nose off to spite your face. That's is right. When you focus on the little things that really aren't changing your financial life, you're, you're focusing on which credit card to use when you're not paying attention to the fact that you bought way too big of a house yeah. or you bought, you know, there's nothing. You just heard me talk about used cars versus new cars. Maybe, I mean, we got an email from somebody asking about a Tesla purchase. Yep. No business whatsoever no. looking at no. a Tesla purchase. That's a premium brand. If you can't pay cash and it's, it doesn't, and there's not other purposes for that money, you shouldn't be doing that right. with your money.